Hey y'all, once again I'm here and I have some kooky questions for you today. So grab a loose leaf piece of paper and a number two pencil because you guys are about to learn something big. Uh, excuse me. Hi Abby, how are you doing? Uh, what are you talking about? Well, just like I said, I have some inquisiting to do today and I must inquire about some questions that I have been thinking about. Anyway, the inquisiting shall begin. First, why do squirrels always look so nervous? What if Cinderella went to the ball in a watermelon instead of a pumpkin? Are tubas actually just overweight trumpets? Uh, actually tubas can't eat. What is the square root of a pineapple? Do jellyfish come in different flavors? Why are cowboys so obsessed with puppies? Um, I don't think cowboys are obsessed with puppies. But they're always saying, get along little doggy. Oh, good grief. Abby, we don't have time for to answer all these questions. Today we're actually just looking at one question that Jesus asked in the Bible. The question is, why worry about a speck in your neighbor's eye when you have a log in your own? I worry about a speck in your neighbor's eye when you have a log in your own. <laughs> That's so funny. Are you for real? That's a question that Jesus actually asked? Why, yes it is. Why is it so funny? It's just so random. And believe me, I know random. Who in the world would have a log of wood in their eye? The world's clumsiest lumberjack? Oh, now that's a silly question. I'll have to remember to ask other people about that later. Oh, thank you, that was a good one. Abby, that's not what the question is asking at all. It's not about lumberjacks or giant pieces of wood. What Jesus was really talking about was judging others. Oh, you, you know, I was a judge in a pie eating contest once. I ate all the pies and the contestants threw me out at the carnival actually. Well, anyways, it was a wonderful birthday. Well, I don't know what all that means. But anyways, I'm not talking about judging, like being a judge at a contest. No, I'm talking about judging as in thinking that you are holier or better than other people. Looking around and making judges in your own head and in your own heart about your value to other people's value. I see. Well, some people may be right though. They might be better than others. You know, what's wrong with simply stating your opinion? What's wrong is that it's not our place. God is meant to be the one and only judge in the whole world. He knows everyone's true value and he wants us to love each other instead of just judging each other. All right, so what does this have to do with a log getting jammed into my eye? Well, Jesus was saying that you shouldn't worry about other people's sin and what they're doing because you have sin of your own that you have to deal with. We have to remember that God is still working in the lives of others and he's working in your own life too. So you're saying that we should stop judging people for their sin and let God take care of it and instead just let God work in our own lives too? Exactly. Well, my brain is all a flutter. Now I should scuttle back behind the scenes where I could seriously consider these curious conundrums. Uh, what does that mean, Abby? Now, I'm gonna go backstage and think about it for a bit. But before I do, I have a final question for you. Do you wanna know? Are you folks sure you wanna know? Well, okay. My question is, do people actually get old? Or do they just wrinkle when you leave them out in the sun too long? It's kinda like grapes turning into raisins. Say what? Well, that was the last question I had, so so it's like my sushi chef always says, a log in the bush is better than one in the eye, or something like that. See you next time. tell I'm a little down in the dumps. I'll tell you why, this experience has been amazing in the kitchen, so I thought I'd do something I never did. Cook a cake, but it's a little harder than it sounds. You see, instead of putting eggs in the recipe, Coach accidentally put refried beans, so all the kids were really extra. Well, let's just say the nurse had to run out and pick up some more Pepto-Bismol. But that's not gonna stop us from learning our power verse today. Maybe that will help me feel a little bit better because I'm feeling pretty judged. So let's learn it today. The power verse today says this, do not judge others and you will not be judged. Matthew 7, 
one. Now this time I want all the boys to stand up and say the power verse together on the count of three. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Do not judge others and you will not be judged. Matthew 7, one. Great job, boys. You can have a seat. Now it's time for the girls. Girls on the count of three, stand up and say the power verse. Here we go. One, two, three. Do not judge others and you will not be judged. Matthew 7, one. Great job, girls. You can have a seat. Now this power verse is making Coach think that sometimes I can be pretty judgmental on those little first graders. I want them to hit their vertical leap to 10 feet. Well, that's kind of crazy though. And I just gotta remember that we're not supposed to judge each other because God is always working on us every single day. We need to just love everybody, right? So let's do our power verse one more time, but this time everybody together and with our physical challenge. All right, everybody, on the count of three, you're gonna stand up, do your power verse, and pat your belly and rub your head. Ready? One, two, three. Do not judge others and you will not be judged. Matthew 7, 1. Great job, guys. You're good patterns and eaters. Listen, I'm going to go grab some barbecue sauce and try my cake again. I'll see you next week. What's up, everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double T L E S. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about another big question that Jesus asked. So, every time today that somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. I will not be the judge of others. Some people try to be the judge of other people. Order in the court, order in the court. Rise for the Honorable Judge Skittles. No, oh, man, that ain't right. We ain't called to be the judge of other people and try to figure out what they're doing wrong. We gotta look at ourselves and confess our own sins. Let God deal with other people. We ain't the judge. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. I will not be the judge of others. And that's what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior. Skittles, out, bang, bang, yeah. Man, ham and cheese again? I'm tired of bringing my own lunch to school. Yeah, I wish we'd get our old lunch lady back. No one wants to eat Coach's milk steaks anymore. I'm scared of Coach. He makes me climb the rope in gym class. Hey, Stacy. What's wrong with you? Well, I was asked to be Mr. Periwinkle's teacher's assistant. What? Oh, that's awesome. That's what you've been dreaming to do all year, be a, a teacher's assistant. Well, I've really been working hard and trying to do my best, but Mr. Periwinkle keeps getting on to me and criticizing me for stuff. Like what? He got on to me for writing on the right side of the board. What? He does that all the time. All right, students. Let's everyone pay attention to what I'm writing on the right-hand side of the board. What? Why would he get mad for something he does all the time? I don't know, but that wasn't it. Later, he got on to me because I brought my own lunch instead of eating Coach's milk steaks. What? He brings his own lunch all the time. Yeah, he never eats in here. Okay, class. So, it's dinosaurs, and we're talking about the lar we're talking about the largest of the dinosaurs, and has the biggest teeth. Yeah, and today he got mad at me because I wanted to take a bathroom break. What? He took three bathroom breaks today. Students, there is absolutely no time for bathroom breaks. Oh, I gotta go. 
Oh, gotta go. Oh, I gotta go. I can't believe he's doing that. He's judging you for a bunch of things that he does and does even worse. That's not fair. I know it's it. Not fair. I, I hate the world. I, I, I hate milk steak. I wish someone would shove a milk I, steak down uh, here. The kids are right. The teacher is doing something called judging. He's getting upset with Stacy for doing things that he considers wrong, but obviously doesn't realize that he is doing also. The Bible teaches us that we are not supposed to judge others. Each of us have enough problems on our own. We are supposed to focus on trying to fix our own problems, not point out the problems of others. Jesus asked a big question about this one time. He asked, why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? In other words, don't worry about other people's sin when you have enough of your own sin to worry about. In your lesson today, you're going to learn the importance of not judging others through the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. You're going to see that there is no place for judging in the life of a Christian. My name is Kayla and I will see you next time when we study more of Jesus' questions, questions, questions. Hi boys and girls, it's me, Miss Jenny. I'm seeing all of you and um, I don't know about you, but we're busy getting ready for school to start and all that will entail. Um, so I hope that's going okay for you. Um, so let's see what our story is for us today. So Jesus tells this, this story in Luke chapter 18 about two men who came to the temple to pray. One man was a religious leader called a Pharisee. Pharisees were the ones who studied the scriptures and taught others in the temple. The other man who came to pray was a tax collector. So the Pharisee stood up and made a big show out of his prayer. He said, Oh God, I thank you that I am not like others those sinners, especially like that tax collector over there. For I never cheat, I don't lie, I don't steal, and I fast twice a week, and I give you a tenth of my income. This Pharisee was all about comparing himself to others. As a matter of fact, he took one look at the tax collector and he decided he knew everything about him. And he knew everything that had, the tax collector had done wrong. As far as we know from the story, the Pharisee had never met the tax collector. Yet he was still certain that the tax collector was a liar and a thief. He was judging the tax collector in a very bad way. He was more focused on the tax collector's sins than he was on his own. So the tax collector's prayer was quite different. He was not a religious leader at all. In fact, he knew that he was a sinful man. He prayed a very different prayer than the Pharisee. He prayed a simple prayer quietly before God. He said, Lord, please have mercy on me. I am a sinner and I need your help. Did you notice the difference between the two prayers? Jesus said that God rejected the prayer of the Pharisee and he accepted the prayer of the tax collector. Why do you think God rejected the prayer of the Pharisee? God rejected the prayer of the Pharisee because his heart wasn't right. He was pretending he was perfect. He was so focused on judging the tax collector that he never confessed his own sin. That's not the way we should be. In your lesson today, you're going to learn the importance of having an attitude 
that is more like the tax collector than the Pharisee. We must not judge others. God is the only judge. Hey, hey, hey! What's up? Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye? The puppets are real. The cases are crazy. The judge is a dog. Welcome to the courtroom of Judge Scruff. Now. Where can I sit? Ah! A courtroom? But I didn't do anything- oh, ah! Why are we here? <gasps> I don't get it! Oh, you're gone down, boy! Oh. All rise for the Honorable Judge Scruff! Judge Scruff? Oh. <gasps> Scruff Dog's in the house. He's got a... He's... My court. Ah, uh, yeah, I got an order. Ah, uh, chocolate coated bone pizza. Hmm. No, not that kind of order. Right. Now I've looked at all the evidence, and I can see that you, Mendel, are in big trouble. Me? No question in my mind about but it. Scruff. Uh -huh. That's your honour to you. Oh, Scruff, your honour. Uh -huh. I don't need to hear any more about it. I can see quite clearly that there is a speck of sawdust in your eye. But you. Uh -huh. It could get infected. It could turn all gooey and crusty and then get so bad that it falls out and rolls across the floor and gets stomped on and then there'll be big eye blobs all over my courtroom! Uh, oh, Graf, I don't think it's that bad. Gus, you okay? <sighs> oh, yeah, I'm okay. Right, why don't you tell the court how you got the speck in your eye in the first place? Well, I was in a chicken coop trying to catch a chicken to make my favourite dinner. Roast chicken. Wrapped in seaweed. When I kick some sawdust up, right into my eye. Don't you know that whenever you go chicken chasing, you should wear safety goggles, you silly little thing? Ugh! Ah! Hey! Oh, well, no, I didn't know that, but um... Uh, no buts about it. I am the judge. And I say, you are guilty! Guilty? Guilty of what? Guilty of, uh, 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 of being a silly pink guy who doesn't know they should wear safety goggles. But how can you- I can do it because I am the judge. Okay, we've got to get that speck out of your eye right now. Your honor! Uh, it's okay. I will get it. <gasps> He's coming! Right, oh, now, where did it go? Oh, can I have a hand, please? Oh, there you go. What's this? Well, not that kind of hand! <laughs> Something to get it out with! Yeah. Ah, yeah, this'll work. A sword? Scott, you can't use a sword! Look at your own um, eye, man! Uh, wait, uh, wait. Uh, no, no good! Um, something else, please? Come on! A rubber chicken? Scruff, you can't ah, use a yes. rubber chicken! A rubber Look chicken. at your own eye! No! Something else! I need something to get it out with! Ah, yeah. Tongues? This Scruff, will work. you can't use tongues! Okay, That's now, just stay still! Look Don't worry, I'm oh, a professional! Do it! Do it! What do you mean? Do it! 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 Do
There's a blank in your eye. What do you mean I've got a blank in my eye? What? Where? Right there. Huh? Oh! That little thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's in your right. eye. I'll oh, work around it. Oh, 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 it's oh, 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 <laughs> Don't worry, folks. I got it. Yeah. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye. Can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Hey everybody, I have a special treat for you today. Today I've invited someone to come out and talk to you. Would you like to meet them? Great. Now I'd like to introduce you to Judge Jones. Keep in mind, Judge Jones is not an official judge that sits in a courtroom. No, but rather is someone who has a lot of opinions about other people and spends their time judging other Christians and just strangers on the street. Let's hear what they have to say. Well, good morning, everyone. I am Judge Jones. It is my duty to judge others. It's really more than talent than a duty, really. I can look at someone and tell you everything that is wrong with them. Yes, such as, do you see that lady coming into church today with the big flowered hat on? I bet she spent a fortune on that hat. She probably didn't even pay her tithes because she doesn't have any money left after buying such a huge hat. Can you believe that? She's stealing from God by not by not paying her tithes. And did you see that other kid here last week with the black jacket on? He did not look trustworthy. I bet he gets in trouble all the time. Tell by the way he had dirt smudges on his shirt that he didn't care about church. And he's not here this week. Hmm, I see. He's probably out sitting somewhere else. And what about each of you? Some of you don't even have your Bibles out today. I can see that. Mm. How could you? I have a very large Bible in its original casing, nice and clean with me at all times. You know why? Because I am more holy than you. That is obvious. Now, hold on just a second, Judge Jones. I think we've heard about enough of what you have to say. You've been pointing out everyone else's flaws or what you think might be their flaws, but we haven't heard anything about you. What about your own life and your own mistakes? Have you ever thought to stop looking at other people and take a look in the mirror? Me? We don't need to talk about me. In, in, you know, I mean, have, have you even seen my Bible? It is big, it is a sturdy Bible, and it is better than all of your Bibles. You know why? Because I love Jesus more than you. That's, that's obvious. So why are you talking about me? Because I am holy. Really? Well, Jesus asked a very important question in the Bible. He said, why worry about a speck in your neighbor's eye when you have a log in your own? Maybe you should take a look at that. Well, I never. You're probably just as bad of a sinner as them. Oh, <coughs> good boy. 
Wow, kids, Judge Jones demonstrated an attitude that Jesus warned us about. He told us not to judge others. But what does judging really mean? Well, you see, judging others is when you decide whether they are holy based on your own opinions. When you see someone dresses a certain way, or acts a certain way, or wears their hair in a certain way. Or maybe they're just different from you and what you're used to. And then based on that, you decide whether they're a good person, bad person, they follow Jesus, whether they really follow Jesus, or are just one of those fake people. Taking all these things and trying to judge where their heart is. That is what we're not supposed to do. God says that he's the only one who can look at the heart, and old man looks just at the outward appearance. It's not our place to look at others and judge whether they are holy or not, or good or bad. That's not our place. We are not to judge because God is the only judge. Let's take a look at what Teacher Jenny has to say about this topic. God is the only judge. God is the only one who sees the condition of people's hearts. Not us. He's the only one that knows whether someone is holy or not. One day we will all stand before God and we will have to answer for everything that we've done here on earth. That means we will all be judged. Until then, we should not judge. Instead of judging others, what should you do? I must never forget that God is working on others and me. Until we get to heaven, we will never be perfect, right? No one will. That is why Jesus says not to worry about the speck in your friend's eye. So that's not your place to worry about them and their issues. Instead, our job is to love them, help them, and pray for them. God is still working on them, as he's still working on us, right? He is helping them to grow. And he's still helping us to grow, too. So let's not judge others. So I'd like to pray with you about God helping us not to judge others. Because sometimes that can be pretty hard. So let's pray. Father God, we just pray that you would help us to focus on our own hearts and our own sins. The things that we are doing wrong or the things that we aren't doing that we should be. Lord, we pray that you would help us and guide us in that direction, that we wouldn't look at someone else and judge them for what they are doing wrong or what they're not doing right. We pray that you would help us to love them anyways, no matter what it looks like, that we would help us to love them and be gentle with them, not harsh and judgmental like the Pharisee. In Jesus' name, amen.
Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye.